Governor. Thank you. My favorite director of Department of Motor Vehicles, Colonel Sweeto, y'all thank you. This is an important day. As you remember, in 2005, the Congress passed the Real ID law. The, uh, this was after 9-11, the purpose of which is to require uh, proper identification when people are getting on airplanes, going into military reservations or federal buildings. And uh, starting on August, uh, excuse me, October the 20th of 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, that federal ID called Real ID will be required if you want to go into those airplanes or into those facilities or into those buildings. And in South Carolina, we, uh, Colonel Sweeto has moved up the schedule and Real ID cards are available now. So everyone can go to a number of locations, which he'll describe, get the, you get your license, driver's license, renew your driver's license, or get your real ID card. You can either get your driver's license or you can get the real ID version of your driver's license, but you can't get both. And you'll have to have it, as I say, by October of, the, uh, of, of 2020, or you will not be able to go into those federal facilities. You can do everything else. You can drive. You do everything you usually do, but you will not be allowed in those facilities or on those planes. Colonel Sweeto. Thank you, sir. Yes. Well, as is typical, it's a great day. It's a great day because we get a chance to roll out what everybody has been asking for now for the last couple of years, and that is the real ID. You can purchase the real ID today at all 67 of our DMVs. Uh, the intent is really to provide a more secure credential to prevent things like the 9-11 catastrophe. There are three things that, uh, that this real ID will allow you to do. It'll allow you to board a domestic commercial aircraft. It will allow you to enter a secure federal building and it will allow you to enter a military installation. I focus on those three, three things because if you don't need to do those three things, you don't need a real ID. So what I'll tell you is you do not need a real ID if you have a valid passport or a military ID. You do not need a real ID to drive, to vote, to receive federal benefits, uh, that are entitled to enter a non-secure federal building like a post office. You do not need a real ID to participate in law enforcement proceedings, and it does not apply to protect, uh, con <coughs> excuse me, constitutionally protected acts. <clears throat> the biggest difference between a compliant and a non-compliant card, and you'll be able to come and look at these afterwards, the compliant card has a big gold star in the corner. A non-compliant card, and I'll repeat this a couple of times, has not valid for federal identification in big, bold, black letters. Every card the department issues today will either have a gold star on it or not valid for federal identification on it. But again, it is a completely voluntary program. You do not need a, a, a real ID if you're not going to do one of those aforementioned uh, activities. The other big piece is one person, one card. You can have a driver's license or you can have an ID card. You can have a compliant card or a non-compliant card. One of the key components of the National Real ID Act is one credential, poor individual, period. And I will tell you where that has been a problem in the past. When an individual comes from out of state and they want an in-state discount and they want an ID card, we tell them before they get it, we're going to cancel your driver's license in New York if you want the ID card, but you own property here, so we'll give you your ID card. All right? And they're shocked when it's canceled. Nationwide, one credential, one person. We want you to save time and renew online. If you are one of the 1.1 million people in this state that is actually pre-registered for a credential, or you got your credential from the uh, November of 2010 time frame forward, you already have qualified for the real ID. We do not want to see your smiling face in the DMV any more than you want to be there. 
please use the online process and we'll mail it to you. If you do not want a real ID and you just want to renew your driver's license, do it online and avoid the lines. It's a really simple process. We don't want to see you there any more than you want to be there. And I speak to that in a very familiar uh, festive piece, but I understand the criticality of your time. <clears throat> What's required if you want a real ID? You have to bring in an original birth certificate. If you don't have an original birth certificate, a valid uh, passport will do. You have to bring in a record of every name change. So, if you're uh, married and you had a birth certificate, a marriage certificate, worst case, divorce decree, marriage certificate, spouse dies, you want to go to your maiden name, a court order. If you have a passport, a valid passport, you'll only need the valid passport to record all those name changes. Otherwise, you have to bring in documentation for all of those name changes. <clears throat> you have to bring in proof of Social Security number, usually a Social Security card or a 1099 with your Social Security number on it, and two proofs of uh, address, not a P.O. box, two proofs of address. When you've got that information, come to the DMV. We will document your validity of those documents, and we will issue you your compliant driver's license or ID card. <clears throat> How much is it going to cost? It's not going to cost a penny more than you're paying right now. It's $25 before, it was 20, it's $25 after. Okay, how long is it valid for? The federal law will not allow a credential to be valid any longer than eight years. The good news for anybody that's 65 years or older is it's good for eight years. We've eliminated that five-year boundary, so yours is now uh, uh, good for the same time as everybody else's. Here's the critical thing. Please do not rush into the DMV. We have two and a half years to make this work. You've just got to have your valid real ID before the 30th of September of 2020, and you're going to be fine. Why do I say that? <clears throat> we have three groups of people in South Carolina. You've got the type A personality that wants to come in today and get it today. They are going to help create long lines. All right? You've got you know, everybody else that will take it in stride. And then you got the third group, which scares me, which are the procrastinators. They're going to wait until the last nine months and make lines happen then. We want to make your experience pleasant. We want to make it easy. We want to encourage you to use our website. You go to www.scdmvonline.com and you can go to the part that says locations and it will list out all 67 locations. When you find the one you want to go to, push the little button that says wait times and it will show you in real time how many people are in line at the DMV then and exactly how much time it takes a person to get from the greeter station to the front desk. If that time is too long, then find another time. Don't come in right then because you've got two and a half years to do it. You might choose to go to another DMV in that area, in which case, instead of pushing the wait times button, push the uh, directions button on your smartphone it will link directly to your GPS and take you to the next location. We want to make this as simple and painless to you as, as reasonably possible. <clears throat> what else have we done to reduce the time on the size of lines? We are now open every Saturday from 9 o'clock in the morning uh, until uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon for just real DMV transactions at six locations. They are Aiken, Charleston, Leeds, Lexington, Florence, Rock Hill, and Greenville Saluda Dam. Those will apply to U.S. citizens only. If you are an international citizen, you can only get your credential at one of our 11 uh, international, excuse me, 22 international locations. 
and you can find those on our website. With that, the last thing that I want to throw in is we are right now premiering our shark kit to your right. What is a shark kit? It is a self-contained hazard area response kit. We had issues with regards to the flood and the hurricane, and we want to be more response, uh, responsible to the citizens of this great state when you have a flood. We now have a mobile capability that we can put in a couple of vans and put them in a parking lot with overhead cover and get you credentials when you need credentials. We built it initially during the flood and we used it with the insurance companies in parking lots at places like Home Depot and Lowe's during both the flood and the hurricane. And we used it here to demonstrate the capability and to highlight, showcase our self-contained hazard area response kits, the shark kits. So subject to your questions, that's everything I've got. Governor? Thank you. Thank you. Mark Willis, Representative Mark Willis, sponsor of the bill. Thank you, Thank you Governor. Thank you, uh, Colonel Suedo. <clears throat> Thank each of you for being here today. It is a great day that we're able to issue our first real ID. Many questions sometimes that we get is why are we doing a real ID? And I want to bring you back a few years when we had the tragedy of 9-11. At that time, Governor, our then President Bush and Congress were looking at ways to make us feel safe. And that's what we want in America and that's what we want within our state to feel safe and secure. This is one way that we're able to move forward. Over the last number of years, we've had many extensions to be able to show that we were attempting to become compliant. It was this past year that we received news that we would not be able to receive another extension. And that's when the DMV and the, Depart and, um, the um, House um, Committee for um, Motor Vehicles, Education and Public Works started to work on a bill that could hopefully be approved with our Homeland Security and with our governor's signature to let us move forward as a state, to let us be more business friendly. Um, I spoke and we heard many testimonies from people, for example, who um, have private contracts with government agencies, who have private contacts, contracts with some of our um, bases, and as a private contractor they would not be able to get on that property without the proper ID. We actually had testimony from grandmothers whose grandchildren live on a base somewhere and without a real ID they would not be able to go and stay and take time and take care of their grandchildren. So there were varieties of reasons that we felt that we needed to move forward, but mostly we needed to move forward so that South Carolina could continue to do business. Right now I'd like to recognize just a few people who made this day possible. First of all, Colonel Schwedo and his staff have worked diligently on this bill. We have Laura Bain and Johnny. And then we have right here Colonel Schwedo, which I'm sorry, I call him Governor Schwedo. He's got that he's got that appeal to him. Chief of staff, John And our Chief of Staff John Laganelli. And then I would like to also recognize Rick Fulmer. Rick Fulmer is a staff attorney and Rick actually did a lot of drafting of the bill along with DMV. And last but not least, our chair lady, Ms. Um, Allison, who gave us the opportunity to move this bill forward in our committee. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Colonel? How much did it cost to implement it? How much did it cost to implement it? Um, we're, we're still uh, absorbing the cost. Uh, I'd have to get the numbers to be accurate. I don't want to give them to you right now. Uh, it's a two-phase thing. Number one, I, I can tell you the kinds of things that we did to cost money, and I think that that will get things. Number one, uh, we know there's going to be a significant increase in demand, and we know that virtually every other state that implemented the strategy had lines up to uh, and beyond six and a half hours. We didn't want to see that. So what we ask for is a very modest increase in temporary workforce to get us through the 30th of September of 2020. We asked for 100 new employees as temps. Now that sounds like a lot until you realize we've got 67 locations. Now we didn't tie them into a specific location. We asked for the ability to go ahead 
and create what we call relief CSRs, which means that we can surge them to locations to where we know they've got increased demand. We also had to write the software to implement the strategy. We had to design a new, more secure card. Uh, there were a number of things that we had to do to meet the intent of the, uh, the law. And so we, we intend to spend that money judiciously, be good stewards, uh, uh, stewards of the money that was given us, and return anything back to the state that we don't use on real ID. More questions? Say again, please. What makes this card more secure? Okay, there are a number of things that make this card more secure. Uh, there are actually three levels of security on all of these in order to be a uh, real ID compliant things. There's level one, level two, and three level three security features. Level one security feature is something that a TSA employee can see with an ultraviolet light that, uh, that is immediately available to you. For example, a hologram on a card or something on the card itself. The second thing, is a level two, and a level two is something that you really need to go ahead and use a special kind of optic in order to go ahead and see what makes that a more secure card. There's actually a level three, a forensic capability, that there are only two individuals in the state that know what those are to go ahead and prosecute cases of, uh, of identification fraud. So it is a, a significantly more um, uh, uh, secure card, although we are still looking for opportunities in the future to make it even more secure, but that will happen over time. It is. So there are basically two kinds of, actually it depends on the, everything that we issue, we're sort of now the Department of Identification, all right? And everything is an identification card and every one of those identification cards is either compliant or non-compliant. So you get an endorsement to drive, you get an endorsement to drive a, C, a CDA, excuse me, a commercial driver's license, and those are all endorsements. But we will only issue either a compliant or a non-compliant card, whether it's ID card or driver's license, and they will all either have the star compliant or the not valid for federal identification non-compliant piece. Say again. No. Once you, once we've got that documentation, you should be good for the end of time. Now, the only part that I'll say, and it's going to get me in trouble with somebody. Sorry, Governor. We'll get me in trouble with him. But you know, we have worked with the federal government on this a very long time, and never once have they lied to us. But periodically, the truth changes. So if the law changes, all bets off. Uh, we had about 22,000 that were initially that we pre-registered, but we have 1.1 million of a 4.2 million population population that are currently qualified to go ahead and get the real ID online. Let me let me make a supposition here. Let's assume though that half of our population uh, does not want a real ID, which is fine. Every one of those individuals today, as a result of a law passed last year, can renew it online right now, but it won't be a compliant real ID. But the average person does not need a real ID. So avoid the lines. If you don't want a real ID and you don't want to come and visit my uh, DMV, go online and order it online. You know, what did we say? Avoid the line, you know, apply online. More questions. I take this one. You're going to get a personal opinion on there, and I have cleared it with my boss. All right. Here's what facts say today. Facts say that there is been no. Yeah, you know, there are 12 states in the country that have no requirement for an eye test and nobody has been able to demonstrate an increase in the amount of accidents in those states. Okay? Assuming that uh, there were, what you should see, we have a 10-year credential right now. So if you believe that there is going to be an increase in the amount of accidents because of an eye test, what you should see on our 10-year license is at year one an increase in accidents, year two an increase, and at year 10 there should be an obscene amount of accidents. 
And as soon as they come into the DMV to get their eye check, it should drop off immediately. Do you know what that line looks like? It's a straight line. Nobody has been able to demonstrate an increase in the accident rate. Why is that? Why do people get their eyes checked? You know why? Because they want to be able to see their TV and they get their eyes corrected so they can see a TV and it has a positive impact on, the, uh, on society at large. We don't need to go ahead and do it. We're one of the few states in the, in, in the nation until last year that was not allowed to renew online. Now ask me why you couldn't renew online. Because we made a law that said you cannot renew online without an eye test. So if you can demonstrate that we're going to improve public safety, all in, baby. But if you can't, and, and we see what we've seen in every other state, where we can renew online and shorten the lines for the citizens of this great state, we're good. But the facts don't support it. Yeah. Any more? <laughs> Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.